you are wrong and I'm right. This is what many of you may think when you hear the word contrarian because of its two root words, contrary and rian, basically meaning a person that's contrary or thinks differently. But I'd like to tell you the benefits of being a contrarian or a contrarian thinker. I mean, some of the greatest people and greatest inventors of our time and people before us were all considered contrarian thinkers, such as Nicholas Copernicus, who discovered that the sun did not in fact rotate around the earth, but the other way around. Albert Einstein, who developed the theory of relativity. Nelson Mandela, who fought an apartheid government that segregated people based on their skin color. Thomas Edison, who illuminated the world one light bulb at a time. Henry Ford, who automated car production and allowed us to drive the cars we have today. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, that developed the music in the past that allowed us to have what we have now. And finally, one of the greatest strategists of all time, Julius Caesar, which military tactics he developed are still used today by some of the largest armies in the world. And so one thing that all of these different people had in common is they were not content with the status quo, the norm. And so they all developed their own ideas, their own theories, and everything about their ideas was different. And they all propelled humanity forward in one way or another. But what does being a contrarian thinker mean for us today? It allows us to decipher, decipher the media that we hear, what we watch, what we read, and what we see. It challenges us and forces us to learn about new people, learn from new people, and learn new ideas and allows us to connect with others and develop our own individual ideas and personality. It allows us to be the next Mandela, Copernicus, and Caesar. Some of you may go home and research, how do I become a contrarian thinker? And I'll give you four tips to show you how to do that today. First, always question. Always take things with a grain of salt. Never fully trust something that you read, see, or hear. You always want to do your own research and read opposing news sources and other forms of media because there's always some sort of bias. You should develop your own ideas and develop things that you want to learn. Second, learn opposing views. When I say opposing, many of you may think one's view, one view is right, one view is wrong. But when I say opposing, I mean different. I may think one thing and a person may think differently and I have to learn both to truly formulate my position. Third, avoid groupthink. Some people may say, don't be a sheep in the herd. Don't follow what everybody else does. And I totally agree with this. One big thing that this, fall, this idea falls under is politics. Many people subscribe to the idea of left versus right, conservative versus liberal. And this idea causes people to be stuck inside of a box that does not let them be a contrarian thinker and think outside of the box, stopping them and being confronted with the idea of leaving their safe space. And fourth, and finally, embracing discomfort. Discomfort is very important, especially when being a contrarian thinker, because you have to step outside of your comfort zone. You have to step outside the boundaries of where you think you are and learn about the world, even if it opposes your own personal views. Some of you may be thinking right now, contrarianism sounds pretty great. Why don't we all just do it? I'd, I'm going to tell you some of the bad things associated with being a contrarian, such as exile or ostracization. Some of the people that I mentioned before were ostracized or exiled from their communities. I'll give you some examples. Nicholas Copernicus was ostracized from his scientific communities for outright denying the biggest piece of evidence that they had to that day. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for his views on civil rights in South Africa. And Julius Caesar was stabbed in the back by his consorts for his ideas on conquering the world. And another, confrontation. You will always have confrontation in your life, but if you think differently from others, you may be uh, confronted more often. Leaving that box, like I said earlier, may have you confronted by people that say, why don't you just choose a side? You can't be in the middle. But I say, you can, and you should be individual and formulate your own ideas. One person that I'd like to mention that created one of the most influential things in the past hundred years is Robert Oppenheimer, the creator of the nuclear bomb. His creation, consisting of uranium and plutonium, created one of the biggest explosions known to man, 
killing millions of people. This was a great development through science, but it, overall, it was not a, a propelling force for our society. And it is used as a big weapon in modern day. Contrarian thought is required to be successful in a, successful in a modern society. We have to think differently to be successful. We have to think differently to be like the modern contrarians, such as Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and Jeff Bezos. Some of you in this crowd or watching might even be the next contrarian, creating a new idea and a different thought that makes you the next billionaire or next scientist. Contrarians change the world one idea at a time. They take their ideas and develop the future for the greater good of humanity. I dare you all to challenge the status quo. I dare you all to create new ideas, and I dare you all to think of new things. For when everyone thinks alike, nobody is thinking at all. Thank you.